God, I'm so tired. <sighs> Stop being tired. Same here, I'm really curious to try it. I, I will hold the, the stance that everybody should try D&D. There is something for everybody within D&D. I, mean, I, I have a session, editors, I have a session tomorrow. Editor was trying to get me into Warhammer 40k. Uh, I, I like Warhammer 40k, but I more prefer Warhammer Fantasy. That's my, that's my thing. I need to get back to D&D, honestly. I haven't been on it in a while. Son of a bitch! I'm, I'm hyper excited for the, for the new book that's coming out because it mixes my favorite, uh, Plane of Existence <gasps> no, from, no, uh, no, no, no. Magic the Gathering. Shit! No, 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 no! Okay. <laughs> Oh god, I can hear that. What, There's the a similar D and D rule set called Tales of a Quest. Yes, Derek the Brony, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. So, oh yeah. I almost played that with fighter. It is a very sim. It's a much simpler uh, rule set, and it's very easy to pick up and play. Huzzah. Uh DJ Samurai JD. I've tried D and D once with friends. Had a samurai class, but it wasn't for me. That's fair. I haven't played Dean Blue years. Griffin. Awesome. I went for a period uh, where I hadn't played D&D for two years. Oh, well, it's like this is an inverted AA meeting for D&D. Like, I haven't, you guys, and I haven't played D&D in a while. I haven't picked up, I haven't picked up my 20-sided die in three years. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but instead of, t instead of saying that you're ashamed you're addicted, you're just ashamed you haven't played in a while, but rather go do it, you're in a circle talking about how you haven't and you need to do it again. I have some that one guy in the group, why don't we just start a session right here? <laughs> yeah. Is it okay that I've never played D&D? &D? Yeah, it's fine. But you should go yeah. out and totally do it. Yeah, you should You should definitely try it. But it's... Try it once. Yeah. I mean, I'm hearing a lot of cool stories from people who like them watching our sessions on Doc's channel. Yeah. And the, the coolest story we've heard this far is how somebody who had extreme social anxiety issues and didn't have any friends, but after watching our sessions, they finally worked up the nerve to join a D&D session at one of their college, uh, college events or something. Um, and as a result, not only did their um, speech, because they were struggling to talk, improve, but their ability to socialize improved vastly, and th they can proudly say that they are actually making waves on communicating with other people and actually making friends, all yes. thanks to D and D. Yeah, and that, as somebody who started running his own like, like actual play tabletop art like show, not gonna mm -hmm. plug it because that would be tactless, but. I had stories like that too, and it always, it's the most humbling, like, it's the most humbling fucking experience that anybody can have, especially as a dungeon master or a group of players to, like, have somebody. I remember we went to a, a convention last year, and uh, one of the people there walked up to my friend, uh, I'm gonna call her Cosplay Viking, because I'm not gonna give out her, like, real, well, it's not her real name, but it's yeah, the name it, she goes it's by. good, we get it. Yeah, yeah like, she, give, her, give her an alias. <laughs> yeah, she cosplay viking she somebody walked up to her and like started talking to her about how her character arness has really helped them you know like come out of their shell be proud of who they are be a little bit more adventurous and mischievous because that's the character that she plays she's a elven rogue who loved Talos and jaffe's character from critical role so much from the first campaign that she asked me to make a gun wielding class for rogues so i came up with a thing called the marksman and it is the most powerful thing that I have ever seen with the most heavy drawbacks I have ever seen. Like, if she gets a shot off, it's basically a guaranteed kill, but if she rolls low, those guns are gonna jam or break. But the character of Arnes has gone through this identity crisis because her family was very well respected, uh, but she wanted to strike out on her own, Shit. but then her father was killed by a rival elven family, so now she's split between wanting to get revenge for the death of her father, or continuing to strike out and just basically forsaking the family name. And she started to cry, because that, like, that was a character that she's... How long have we been playing now? 
started back in 20... 2018, so... Two years. We have been playing for two years so far. And we started streaming last year. Uh, and for I could tell that she was just, you know, proud that a character that she had improv in my living room at three in the morning one night because she had never played D&D &D before and she wanted to play D&D &D for a birthday one shot. It's actually helping people improve themselves and as as creators and like performers of a certain art can we ask for more than that to be inspirations to people really 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 can but i think it just moves me even more that you actually helped improve somebody's life just because they didn't know how to talk or socialize before and now they're finally being able to for the first time yeah it's it, like it's pretty big. Yeah, it's like, it's like, they're like, you see, like, your, your, like, storytelling ability, or your, like, what God your characters it. have done, or the way that you tell a story, like, you seem so confident, it's like, I know for a fact I'm still struggling to the fucking, like, understand who I am. I have no idea where I'm going with my life, but thank you anyways. <laughs> I mean, with me and my character, it's allowed me to vent pent up sadness or fears. What? To... Mm -hmm. what? I think he's talking about the game. Yeah, no, yeah. I went to look. JK. Uh oh. Hmm. Hmm? Whoever's going, I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading a comment from the chat. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I actually got to explore some pretty cool things about my own personality by writing Aeon, because. It's after my near-death experience, so then I'm just like, okay, I don't really know myself that well, so whatever I write here, or like if I pro project myself on the proverbial darkness, as pretentiously as that sounds, I don't know how Jesus. to put it, and I write down whatever is there, uh, then whatever is there must on some level be me. God damn it. And that's a great, that's, that's a great thing, uh, great point. Maybe sometimes just writing a, and I hold by this, like, this notion about D&D characters or fictional characters for, like, a, like, a Pony Sona, like, Bliss, Aeon, uh, Vlad. Uh, <laughs> it is an opportunity to explore an aspect of ourselves and just build upon it and learn more about ourselves. Because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's a persona. It's an aspect of ourselves that we want yeah, to yes. explore. You can't, you can't play as something you don't have a concept of. That doesn't mean that your consumption of it is necessarily correct or that even matters in D&D. It's just everything on some fundamental level does... Or you, you probably know this just as well as I do. Like, it, it's this idea that, like, everything you do or project out of yourself must on some fundamental level come from you because uh, you, can, you can't create something you have no conception of, otherwise you wouldn't know what it is. It's... So because you know what it is, you have a conception Fuck. of it. I just planted it. Hmm. I'm uh, that's also like stoned. With, um, uh, say, like, that's like with me with um, two of my Persona like characters. Like I got one that is for My Little Pony, which is my Kieran OC lucky genre. But I have a human-like character that is my like my King of Hearts sh 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 that I named Jesse. Yeah, it's like my nickname. So what? <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, really, at the end of the day, a not a whole lot of people know about this, but I think a lot of my friends already figured it out that um, I am literally playing a uh, fantasy every day. I I like I've always played fantasy since I was a kid. I'm doing it now. Um, being or taking on a role of lightning bliss is a part of my personality you're putting me in i'm putting this character in situations and this is how i would react in this situation uh, now to an obvious extent it's not all me it's just a part and that's what fans seem to get confused about because they think they see bliss, so they know ent entirely what I'm all about. No, it's not just me. 
It's not all they're saying. It's not all of me they're saying. It's a part of me. <laughs> Persona is an aspect of yourself that is exaggerated. Yeah. It's acting. Yeah. It's playing a part. Yeah. To put it in terms of a very popular game franchise, I am thou, thou art I. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> that's also, that's that's also, that's also used to identify with the highest of powers God in medicine. God damn it. But that's, and that. actually you're, the, the game, pr the game persona is just a play on Aleister Crowley's... So like it's so, like your your persona is supposed to be it's just a stand-in for the Holy Guardian Angel in the Lima. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that and that is supposed to be the emissary of divine power within the individual, so it, or it's Anka Fen Kansu, myself made perfect. That's also the same thing for the shadows as well. They're supposed to be your inner demons. Hmm. Because I mean the darkest parts of humanity. I love how we went from yeah. Casual earlier, just bitching about different Disney movies to like, we are all like the end of the night, like the last day of a convention. We are like three mugs in, like th at the local tap house, and we're just spilling all over. We are connecting, we are identifying. No, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I might just start crying. You may see me cry. Bro, oh, I'm just moving out. Hey, I'm stoned to be able to talk about this stuff all day, but, um... Yeah, no, but the, the thing that Persona doesn't get, obviously isn't going to put in there about it, is even though there's a concept of the personal daemon or, and the Holy Guardian Angel, these are not Christian symbols. Yeah. Um, oh, no. They're they're family, but the thing that Persona doesn't get properly is that the Holy... your your unification with personal divinity is achieved by either destroying your concept of opposites or unifying Fucking your concept hell. of opposites. In that sense, there is no there is no longer a shadow. Because it's it's you fully integrated that part of your personality into you. So even if it is said to be an angel, it's it's really that all of you has been completely balanced out. Fuck, 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 come on. Explore that a little bit in Persona 4, whenever you like reject the shadow, it attacks you, but when you beat it, it, you reabsorb it into yourself and it ceases to be a shadow. Yeah, and well, it basically it just becomes part of you. Yeah, no, there's another thing about that too, you can test this in a ritual magic, is if a demon appears to you under a horrifying guise or is something inhuman, uh, uh, A, its influence over you is probably greater, but also that it means that you're um, rather than acknowledging that the demon also represents a valid part of your humanity, and if it is a lower part of the, your humanity. Um... Mm -hmm.